Okay. Now I'm going to close these. They're kind of dangerous if you leave them open. Okay. I'm going to say goodbye to the K Wilderness. I had that infamous story about uh, Sid Vicious and Nancy Spongin. Now we're going to take a look at why these were infamous. Okay, because of these knives, you know, I'm going to hold another one. Because of these knives were infamous, the police in New York City wanted to confiscate every goddamn one of them because they were hard to find. You didn't know who was carrying them. And a problem was, was kids were carrying them. Under 18, you could buy these knives. You can go to Times Square. There were places and stores like they are today. These were in very small cardboard boxes, and it just kind of said knife on the top. Very, very... No frills at the time. Remember, path bark, no frills. That's what this box packaging looked like. It just said knife on top or wilderness hunting knife. So you'd buy it for five bucks. They weren't that much. And that's back in 70s money. So today it's around maybe 1995 you'd probably get these for. And it was a good knife. We all know that. It was Some were good, some weren't good. But the police kind of said to everybody, you know, they're, they're bad. They're bad knives. They're used for muggings. They're used for stabbings. You know, you got the Sid Vicious thing. It's a gravity knife. They, they said to themselves that that's a bad knife because you can flick it out in a split second. You can flick it real fast. They consider this a gravity knife. Which it's not. This is not a gravity knife. This is a lock blade knife with just a light blade and a light spring that may be able to flick it out fast. This is a gravity knife. Now there's a big difference. Okay, we're going to take the lanyard out and we see that there's a long lanyard with this. It kind of gives you the idea of what it's for. Uh, there's a spike, a marlin spike. Okay, completely different than this 007. Okay, now this is a gravity knife that I'm showing you. Marlin spike goes. This is the difference between the 007 and the gravity knife. You take the gravity knife, which is completely different, and watch this. The blade falls out. Blade falls in. The blade falls out. The blade falls in. That's called a gravity knife. It's totally different than this, this K9, this Jaguar, where you have to flick it. But because New York was the way it is, they considered it a gravity knife because the blade came out easily. Very easy. Very easy. Now these are illegal. Everybody knows gravity knives. You can't use a gravity knife. Okay? It's illegal because it's considered automatic, which it's not. It's not automatic. It just moves by gravity. Okay, this one here is a BUND, B-U-N-D, which is the German, uh, the German military. This is probably a 1980s knife. Okay? No problem with this. It's a good knife. Can't carry it. It's really good for nothing, absolutely, just by looking at it and keeping the history. But I, I demonstrated that because that's the type of knife that they were assuming that these other knives were, which they're not. So let's take a look. Now we had the Wilderness. Okay. We had the 007, the original. Now we have another one, another knife company. I mean, now... This is another knife company. If you look, it's the same knife. Take a look at the 007. Open that up also. Same damn thing. Probably same, made in the same damn factory. Same knife. Same markings. Stainless steel Japan. But the big difference is, is this one says 007. And this is a different company. This says something completely different. This says Fury. Everybody knows what Fury knives are. If you're uh, uh, into uh, mid-grade knives or like Bud K or anything, you'll know what Fury is. Fury is a knife company that is Chinese, of course, now. But it's an old Fury. This is a knife from the 70s, so that Fury name's been around a while. But look, I'm going to pan in on this. This is the big difference that these people were doing to, to, to try to break away from that stereotype 007. Now I'm going to bring the camera in, and I want you to look at the number on this. There's a complete and utter difference between the writing on this knife and then the writing on the other knife, the infamous 007. If you look... Okay, I'm going to come in as quick... As I can, okay, it's going to have to zoom in. This camera is new to me, so I'm starting to use it. Ah, there it is. Nice and crisp and clean. Fury. Fury 747. Now let's take a look at why that's called the 747. 
It's not because it's a jumbo jet, that's for sure. It's big enough to be a jumbo jet, but it's clearly not a jumbo jet knife. This knife was definitely redesigned a new name. This knife, after they got the bad news that all these other knives were infamous, they came out with a Fury 747. Not 007, but 747. And even if you look at that number, that 7, how that 7's made, it is exactly made like the 7 on there. They're both the same knife, probably from the same factory. But they got in trouble. They had to do something to get away from that infamous name, 707. So they just put 747 on it. Don't ask me. Anything to sell a product during that time. But this one, this is my carry knife. This is a fast knife. This is a wonderful knife. It's been just sharpened. Now these knives won't hold an, they'll hold an edge somewhat. They sharpen to a razor. They are razor sharp. But they do not hold an edge. You do nothing with this knife but cut tape, maybe cut a cardboard box. Even doing that will dull the blade. But these knives are so sharp when they're sharp that they're only good for one thing, like I said, for cutting somebody. Okay, so you close this one up, but they got around it, man. They got around it. They got around it by doing 747. Okay, now these knives too, the 747 knives, uh, were, it's kind of rare. I've never seen the 747, but I did some research on it. And uh, a police officer in, uh, I, I had met, uh, one of my brother, he, he lives in New York City in Hoboken, and I was talking to him, and I kind of said, do you remember these knives? And he's like, oh, yeah, there were different ones. And I said, do you remember the Fury? He's oh, they made them all, which they did. They made them all. But they made them all. Now, let's take a look at some of the others. Now, not just this big. I mean, this is the largest size. They had three sizes of these knives. Okay, they had the, the large size, which, like I said before, probably was 12 inches, which it is. Okay, they had the 12-inch version. Now, I don't have the smallest version, but I do have the mid version. This is the mid version. This is a 700 bond. Now, they had to have names because if you wanted to buy these knives, you said, I want the original 707. I want the mid-size 707 bond, which the writing on this knife, this is a used one. Okay, take a look at it. It's smaller. It's a smaller one, but it would say bond on it. Okay, we'll take a look at this. They had uses. Each one was its own size. It's the same damn knife, but it just looks, it's like, honey, I shrunk the kids. They shrunk it down a little bit. It's the same damn knife. Now, you can see a little bit of a difference. The handhold here. This larger knife has a grip, where this knife is straight. I know that some of the larger knives didn't have this, but that is because of this little bump right here. It was the larger size, where this one is flat. But it's the same knife. It's the same factory. It comes from the same thing. It still says stainless steel Japan. Okay. Now, these are chrome steel plates. These aren't solid stainless steel. These are not that... 440 or anything like that. These are pretty cheap. These blades are shiny. I mean, you can really see that they don't they don't scratch. They don't really scratch too much unless you really heavily use them. But even the small, we're going to look at this. Let me close these because they are extremely dangerous. If you look at the bond here, and I think there was another one. There was a smaller size than this. I forget the name of it. Um, there is a video on the internet with the smaller size. Uh, I think, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. It was the 707 Guardian. The Guardian was the smallest size 007 you can get. So there were three sizes. This is the mid-size. And look at that. They all flick. I bet you that little Guardian will flick just like the big ones. This is the Bond. Look how fast that is. That's a quick knife. Now, the spring is nothing, I mean, it'll hold, but I wouldn't trust that spring. If I was to stick that into a tree, you don't know if that's going to come back and get you. So I wouldn't do anything besides collect these knives. Now, like I said, I do carry one in the glove box of my truck if I need to open up packages or boxes or if I'm, I'm cutting cardboard. But even that, you got to watch because you don't know if that blade's coming back. Now... Like I said, this one, let's take a look and see what the, the height difference is. I mean, we got this one's 10 inches. The, the blade length is 5 inches. And, uh, you know, it's a tinier knife. It's better for carrying. 
You know, this, this is a small, compact knife. This will fit in your front pocket. And when you do put them in your pocket and you sit down, they kind of go sideways. Now, because of that, it makes it comfortable. You don't even know you're carrying this until you put your hand in your pocket. And you're like, oh, there's my knife. That's how small these were. And these were definitely the knives at the time that you can, you can get cheap and that you can use. And like I said, they were infamous. I mean, the punk rockers carried them. You had other people, but they weren't known really outside of that New York area too much. Maybe Connecticut in that area, down a little south in northern Jersey. You know, I talked to people and, and, and you know, I, I saw videos and one guy had said also that, hey, you know, these weren't known, man, in Minnesota and California. They didn't sell them there. They sold them where the demand was. And that demand was New York City because it was a dangerous place. Not like today. It's touristy. It's, you know, there's a lot of police there and crime has dropped down. But, let me pick the good one. The 007 was, this was the weapon that all the muggers used. If you got mugged in New York City, you're sitting there, you're on a subway, right, and somebody takes a knife and they flick it out at you. Now, you're scared to death, you hear that noise, you're going to assume, oh my god, he had a switchblade, he, he mugged me. It's not, he didn't have a switchblade. Switchblades were somewhat hard to find back then because they weren't, the availability of them wasn't as good as these things. So it's what's a junkie with a 007. I mean, when you were, these people that were interviewed, they're like, oh, it's, it's a switchblade, it came and mugged me with a switchblade. It wasn't. It was this knife. These were the knives that they used. Now, because they're menacing, because of their large size, they scare the hell out of you. And the reach, I mean, these things are as big as a K-bar. If you hold a K-bar out and you hold this knife out, they're both the same length. I mean, you can really reach out and touch somebody with these things. If you're fighting... Are you at a, 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 a rift with somebody and he had a little pocket knife? Because during that time, there were probably about two knives that were pretty popular. It was that Buck 110. You know what that was. It was a folder. It was a 110. It was a Buck knife. And it didn't come out like this. This came out real quick. See, that didn't come out all the way. If you don't know how to flick it right, it won't come out. But a Buck 110, you flick it, it's not coming out. It would have done what I, you just saw. But... The Buck 110, if you were carrying it at that time, and you had this 007, I mean, who's going to win this fight? All you do is back off, and the guy's got you. He's got, he's got you with this thing. It's huge. So that's, the, that's a look at these infamous knives. Now, I'm going to line them up. I mean, at least put them in the frame as best I can. Now, this camera I'm using is a G30. This is a brand new camera, so I'm trying this out for the first time. So I'm trying to get the frame in perfect. But, you know, you kind of get an idea. You know, this isn't really, the gravity knife is not infamous. And this, you know, K-bar is for another day. And, but I was impressed. I was impressed by these. I remember, uh, I'll give you a story about these knives as a kid. Uh, my parents, uh, we had a family trip and we went up to the mountains, which was uh, near the Tamako Hazelton area. And I remember my brother, we were going up to um, a state park. And uh, for some reason, I don't know exactly what it was. I think my brother maybe had to, uh, you know, just do his duty, number two or one or whatever he was doing outside the vehicle. But he came back to the car with this. He said, look what I found. He had found it on the side of the road. This knife was on the side of the road. And as a kid, and this is, I was probably about seven or eight years old. I remember my brother having this knife. He had it in his tackle box. He took it fishing, not knowing how infamous it was. We only knew it as, well, that big lock back there. And this is the color. It was this color. And, but I think it was this size. I don't think it was the larger size. It was this because I remember it being flat. But he found it on the side of the road, and I never knew how infamous it was. It kind of disappeared over the years, probably fishing might have fell in the water. But I got all these knives. Okay, I got them all on the Internet. And every one of these knives, this one here, the 007, New Jersey, New Jersey, Fury, New Jersey, and the infamous Jaguar, K11, New Jersey. Got them all from New Jersey because they were confiscated. The police grabbed them. Um, different people, they, they were, when they found these on you, or the parents found them on their kids. They confiscated these things. They they were notorious. They didn't want these in New York City. They didn't want the muggers to have them. They didn't want the, the, the bands. They didn't want anybody to have these. I mean, you could just imagine. Just imagine this. 
uh, you know, there's clubs downtown at the time in the 70s where these punkers would go and they would wear those biker jackets. And you know, I'm trying to think, I have a biker jacket, there's a zipper, there's a cigarette pocket, and I think there's another pocket somewhere, but they would take these and they would unzipper that and they would put them right here in their jacket. I know, I mean, it just fits in there perfect. I mean, a biker jacket. And you can like zipper it up and have this landler just showing like this. So when you want to just unzipper it and just pull this knife out and you're ready to go, man, these punk rockers. I mean, you, you had these guys in New York City, I mean, with the knives. Uh, now we're talking about the punk rock group uh, that liked the knives because they were such large size. They were cheap and available. And it was bad, man. You went into Manhattan at that time. Manhattan was really bad. There was drugs. You had drug dealers. You had other people trying to rob you. And like for Sid, people knew him. They, they knew him on the street. They knew who he was. People would come to his, uh, you know, 101 Chelsea, where he lived, or the apartment. They would come to his house, and they would party. So he definitely needed some type of, uh, you know, one of these knives to protect themselves. And unfortunately, that one knife uh, caused his own death. That knife killed his girlfriend. They don't know who did it. Uh, you know, going back to the Sid and Nancy issue with the knife, um, afterwards, uh, they don't know who, who stabbed Nancy.